So now we are on our second piece of the first lecture, the intro to anatomy lecture. And now I want to talk about the language of anatomy. But before we get into all of that detail, let's talk about pronunciation. I did want to mention that for this class, I am not going to judge you on pronunciation, not just because it's online, but because I never do. And the reason I don't is because, um, especially teaching at the University of Guam, where there's so many international students, there's a lot of accents out there and everyone kind of pronounces things differently. You can say duodenum, you can say duodenum, you can say capillary or capillary. There's a lot of different ways to say these words. And so my suggestion for you is to not worry so much about how they're pronounced and instead really focus on the spelling. So I really suggest that you pronounce it whatever way that helps you uh, spell it correctly, because that's what's going to be important for this class. Okay, so yes, unfortunately, especially in lab, spelling counts. So think about how you're gonna, how you're gonna attack that as we go through. Okay, so on to the terms. So today we're gonna talk about two different terms, two different types of terms. The first is regional terms. All the different body parts have their own special name, as you can imagine. And then we're gonna talk about directional terms, okay? so. Why do we bother learning all of this terminology? It seems like a lot of kind of tedious vocabulary. And it really has to do with the, the fact that these terms are going to be universal terms that are used kind of universal everywhere, right? So that when we're talking about uh, parts of the body, we can communicate with other people and, and so that everybody understands what we're talking about. Okay, so we're going to learn these terms so that we have this universal language that we can all talk to together. And so these terms are going to require a lot of practice because like learning the language of any, any other language, Spanish, English, German, or whatever, you got to get the vocab down first so that you can communicate. Okay, so you will need to practice these, starting with the regional terms. And I don't want to make it too boring in this little lecture, so I'm not going to sit here and kind of go over every single piece. I do, but you do need to know these. I do want to explain to you that it, even though it feels like it's kind of pointless now, once you get to the skeletal system, it's really, really going to be helpful. So I really suggest that you take this seriously and you go ahead and learn them now, and you will be thanking yourself later. So a couple of ones I want to highlight real quick, like for example, this. This is the frontal region, the frontal region, and the bone underneath the frontal region is oh, the frontal bone. Yay! Okay. Another one I want to mention is cervical. Cervical is neck, okay? So the, the, the vertebrae, those are the cervical vertebrae. Also, we have thoracic vertebrae, or that's or in the thorax, this part, the chest. And then the lumbar vertebrae, which is the lower back. Okay, so again, I promise you, these terms will come up over and over again. And so if you learn them now, you'll be much better off in the future, okay? One point, one, one, that, one specific one that kind of people trip up on is this chin. Now, for some reason, I don't know why this is, um, people have a really hard time accepting that the chin region is called the mental region. It seems like it should be like the forehead is the mental region, but no, that's frontal and the chin is mental, okay? So right there, you have, for example, so that's the chin region right there. Okay, so I'm not going to go through this. I do want to do a little bit of assignments as when we come together as a Zoom group, but practice those, please. Okay, now let's talk about directional terms. And when we talk about directional terms, it's very important that you understand that all directional terms um, assume that the subject is in anatomical position, even if they are not currently in anatomical position. I'm going to really show that to you as we go through. Okay, so anatomical position is fairly natural mostly. It just means facing forward, the feet are facing forward, everything's facing forward. The one part that is really kind of creepy and weird is those hands. 
okay? So the hands are going to be by the side and facing forward, palm forward, okay? So that is anatomical position. So please notice that in anatomical position, the most lateral, which we'll see in a minute, is the outside part will be facing, will be the tip of the thumbs, okay? So facing, hands facing forward. Okay, in the directional terms, one thing that might be helpful for you is that those directional terms come as pairs. Usually they come as pairs. And the reason I think that's helpful is because sometimes when you um, hook one piece of information with another piece of information and kind of connect them together, that helps it stick in your brain. Okay, so that's one of the ways to provide context for how you learn this information. Okay, so let's go through them. The first one is, what is the term for above? Okay, going up towards the head. That would be called superior. Okay, so superior means upwards, above. And then what would be the opposite of superior? Inferior. So inferior means below. So superior is up, above, and inferior is below. Okay, so one the way I like to remember that is if you have a job and you have your superiors, your superiors on your job, they're above you. They're your bosses, they're above you. So that is superior above, inferior below. Okay, so what I would like you to do is on that piece of paper, because you should be taking notes right now, I hope that you are, <laughs> on your little notes, what I want you to go ahead and do is write me an example. And no, I am not collecting this. This is just for your own practice, okay? So could you put these words, one of these two words, in a sentence? So choose one body part and compare another body part. Let me give you an example. I could say that his, let's say, let's say I can say that his head is superior to his belly button. It's above his belly button. So choose two body parts, one above another or one below another, and write yourself a little sentence just to practice. Okay, let's move on to the next pair. Now we're going to be talking about towards the midline or away from the midline. So if we pretend that we drew, drew a line right down the middle of our subject here, LeBron James, we put a line right down the middle and we go towards that midline, so towards the middle part of the body, the word for that is going to be medial, medial. And I like this word because I really think that it helps that both that medial starts with middle and even kind of sounds like middle. So medial means middle, going towards the midline inside. So going away from the midline would be lateral, lateral going away from the midline. And so remember that the most lateral point of the body would be the tip of the thumb because if you're in anatomical position, that should be the most, the furthest away from the midline of the body. Okay, so medial, middle, lateral, away. Okay, and again, go ahead and write an example. So from the example that I might choose, I could say that his, I'll go with belly button again, his hips are lateral to his belly button. They are further from the midline. Or I can just as easily say the belly button is medial to the hips. Okay, next piece, next pair. Now what we've done is we took, we took our subject and we turned him to the side. So what we're looking at now is towards the front versus towards the back. So if it is towards the front, we're going to use the word anterior. And another word for anterior is ventral. And the word ventral just really means belly side. Okay, so because we are upright, our bellies are in the very front of us. And so this, that's ventral. Okay, so anterior means front. And so what would back mean? That would be posterior. Okay, so anterior front, posterior back. And another term for posterior you could also use would be dorsal. Dorsal is the region for back. So your dorsum is your back. Okay, so anterior front, posterior back. So again, I want you to write an example just to kind of get on top of this. I could say that the sternum, which is the bone right here, the sternum is anterior to the vertebral column, to the spine. OK, 
okay? It's in front of it, okay? So I could also say something like the brain is posterior to the nose, that kind of thing. Okay, next pair. Now we're going to be looking at a pair that talk about how deep something is. Okay, so when we look at this picture, let me just orient you right now. This is if you took the arm and you made a slice through the arm and you look down into the slice. Okay, so this right here would be the bone. All this red stuff would be the muscle. You got some blood vessels in there too. And then you have the skin surrounding it on the outside. So the term for towards the surface is superficial. Okay, so for example, I could say that the skin is superficial to the muscle, it's above it, it's further out towards the surface. And the way that I like to remember that is if you think about like someone who's like so superficial, like, oh my God, they only care about the surface, that's superficial, okay? Towards the surface. As deep, if you're being really deep, profound, you mean there's more inside, right? So deep would be closer into it. And so an example could be, the bone is deep to the muscle. Okay, so one thing I'm hoping you that you recognize is when we're using these directional terms, really they are comparative terms where you're comparing two body parts, two pieces of the body against each other. Okay, so the skin is superficial to the muscle, but the bone is deep to the muscle. Okay, so go ahead and try and write an example. And you don't have to use one from this picture. You can use any part of your body as you want. You could say the liver is deep to the skin or the, lip, or the lungs are, are deep to the rib cage or something like that. Okay, next piece. Now this piece is a little bit tricky. This next pair is tricky because these pair, this pair of terms are only gonna use in special circumstances. They're only gonna be used if we're talking about body parts that are on an appendage. Now, what do I mean by appendage? So generally when we think of appendage, we think of arms and legs, but appendage really just means things that stick out from a main piece. So if we're looking at this picture here, here is his torso. The torso is the main part of his body. The parts that stick out, the arms and the legs, those are the appendages. But you could also talk about appendage for, in a different context. So for example, here's my palm. That's the main part of my hand. The appendages that stick out of my hand would be my fingers. So you could also use these terms if you're talking about particular parts on the same appendage with like the same fingers. Okay, so let's look at this piece. So if we're going towards the main part of the body, towards the torso, which is this part right here, you're going to use the word proximal. Oops, gonna move my picture. Okay, so proximal means towards the main part of the body. And the way that I remember that is that you're going in close proximate. You're getting closer to the main part of the body. Whereas if you're going away from the main part of the body, so get along an arm or along a leg further away from the torso or the main part of the body, that's going to be distal, which sounds a lot like distant. Okay, so you're going further away from the main part of the body. Okay, so proximal towards the body piece, towards right here in the torso, distal further away. And remember that these terms are only going to be used if you're talking about points that are on an appendage. If you're not, you'll use some of the other terms like medial, lateral, superior, or inferior. Okay, so go ahead and try to write an example. Let me give you an example. So for example, I could say that the hand is distal to the elbow. It's further away from the main part of the body. Okay, let's see if we can test it out. Let's see if we can figure this out. So if I were to show you this, the point A is blank to point B. What would be the best directional term for us to choose? Okay, so when we look at this right here, the first thing we want to remember is that even though she is not in anatomical position, you still need to put her back as if she is, sort of put her back upright as if she's in anatomical position. 
Okay, now that then we need to look at it. So once we put her back upright, point A is below point B. So what is the term for below? That would be inferior. Now I have in the past had students say, well, why can't we say distal because point A is on an appendage? But the question is, is point B on an appendage? No, it's, it's on the main part, it's on the torso. So if they would both have to be on an appendage in order for them to use distal or inferior, sorry, distal or proximal. Okay, so the best directional term to choose would be inferior because it's below point B. Okay, so again, anatomical position. Use that anatomical position. Number two, so point A is blank to point B. Okay, first of all, before we answer this question, I just want to draw your attention to the look on his face. That right there is pure joy. So that, I love this picture. That makes, makes me smile all day. Okay, so, but let's go back to the question. So here we have point A, and here we have point B. So what would be the best directional term for us to choose that describes the location of this point, this body part, in comparison to this body? Point A is proximal to point B. So notice that both point A and point B are on an appendage, they're both on the leg, and therefore we can use the term, in fact we should use those terms, and so that means that point A is closer to the main part of his body, that's his torso, so we're going to use the word proximal. You could also say that point B would be distal to point A. Okay, so it really takes a little bit of practice to get comfortable with these terms. And I'm going to be using these terms the entire semester, so let's go ahead and learn them. Last one. So point A is blank to point B. Okay, so remember if we pretend that there's a midline all the way along it, A just happens to be right on the midline, and so it is more medial to point B. So medial means closer to the midline, lateral means further away. So I could say that point B is lateral to A, or I could say point A is medial to B. Good. Okay, so that's enough for this little piece. Bye, see you soon.